What's going on everyone? How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. I hope you can hear me. It's really loud in this mask. Mm. What we're going to do today is mm. I'm going to watch 1978's Halloween and I'm going to talk about it as I watch it. And in the comments, I want you to take part and talk about the movie as well. This is undoubtedly one of the best uh, slasher horror movies uh, ever made. And uh, I'm going to watch it and talk my way through it. I'm going to have the volume down because I don't want to get a copyright strike. So, here we go. Let's watch 1978's Halloween. We got the opening going on with the pumpkin and all that good stuff. All that good stuff going on. Screenplay by John Carpenter and Deborah Hill. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Mask is warm. Haddonfield, Illinois. Halloween night, 1963. Of course, we open up to a, a first-person shot of someone walking up to the Myers house. Classic shot, classic house. Probably one of the most famous homes in movie history. Definitely, probably horror history. And what you're going to notice about this movie is it's a slow burn movie. That means it takes a while for anything of real significance to, to really happen, to really see our protagonist, if that's the correct word I'm looking for, our main guy, Michael. I mean, you go through a good hour of the movie and, you know, you barely have anything really happening. You know, it's not a quick movie like your Friday the 13th and your... Uh, Nightmare on Elm Streets, stuff like that. So now we got now we got the sister and the boyfriend going upstairs to do a little bit of gross, disgusting. Disgusting, I tell you. Who is this? Who is this person in the house? We don't really know. See, that's the thing. We don't really know what's going on. We don't know who this is. We don't know who just grabbed that butcher knife. No clue. 
Is it the boogeyman? Who is it? I wish I could have it turned up, but hopefully you're watching the same. You could join in and watch the movie as well while you're watching this and hear the commentating and, and comment and all that good stuff. Right now we got the boyfriend leaving the house. He just opened the door and walked out. That's pretty much where we're at. Now we have this figure, whoever it is, looking to go up the stairs. Yep, he's going up the stairs. See how nice and dark it is? Dark. Mood and atmosphere. Thanks, Dave McRae. If you don't know who he is, look him up on YouTube. Dave McRae. The voice guy. Very smart individual. And I get a I get a lot of information from him. Now we just seen this person in the first person view put this mask on. So we're looking through the eyes and we come upon his sister whom is naked and looks really good. Nothing wrong with a little bit of boob. Little bit of boob. And he's taking her out. He's killing her. He's killing her. Good lord. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Still seeing it through his eyes. We don't know who it is. We don't know what's going on. We just know somebody went up there and killed the girl. Now they're walking out, and we're fixing to find out, oh, it's a little blonde-headed boy in a clown outfit, and his parents had just got home, and they took the mask off, and the camera's panning away, and you might be wondering, whenever you watch this, why are they standing there? Why is nobody talking? It's kind of almost like a, a video snapshot, like a and it's just kind of, instead of an actual picture, and it may be just, it's more like a video kind of, you know, kind of a moment. Smith's Grove, Illinois, October 30th, 1978. This movie is an absolute classic. It's one I've watched 50 times, I guess. Now we're being introduced to Dr. Loomis. Dr. Loomis. A lot of people regard him as the greatest thing about uh, the Halloween movies that he was in. You know, I'm not one of those that are just... Uh, that just find the insane greatness about the actor or the or the character or anything, but uh, sure, I mean he brings Donald Pleasance is his real name. Uh, of course, he brings a certain something to the movie, uh, and he is a bona fide, you know, legit theatrical whatever uh, type of an actor. Um, he does have some merit and some. Some qualifications there that put him in there. Uh, he's a uh, he does the character good. Uh, he does the character well in this movie and the second one, and then it starts to veer off a little bit in the in the four, five, and six. I think he was in the sixth one, but he died shortly after the sixth or the fifth. I can't remember which one. I'm lost. I get I'm a little lost on him, but. You know, this lady driving with him in the car right now is the same lady in, 
Maybe H2O? I think that's the one. Now they're saying they're driving up and they're seeing some inmates that are out scattered around, I guess. In the dark. Dark and rainy. Sorry about my nose. It's always itching and driving me crazy. Right here, you're going to notice something if you pause the movie at a certain spot. Michael gets on top of her, whatever, a, a character, whatever, gets on top of the car that the nurse is in. Donald Pleasance went out to get the gate. But this person that's up on top of the car, like, I don't know why she didn't have the car in park. But anyway, she's parked now, and now she's against the window, and you're going to see a hand come down and break the window. You can actually see a wrench. He has a wrench taped to his arm, to his hand, or, uh, like a crescent wrench or, or, you know, a wrench, whatever. And so it breaks the window. <laughs> you can see that in there. And now he just got away, guys. Michael just got away. Now Loomis is... Loomis is not happy. He's concerned. Because this guy, yeah, you, you're a little dramatic, bro. Relax. Watch your movie. Your movie. So dramatic. Now we're in Haddonfield. We see Lori for the first time coming out of the house. Walking down the sidewalk. Do 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 do. I'm Lori. Do 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 do. And her dad comes out and tells her, don't forget to drop the key off at the Myers house. That was a big mistake. Walking down the sidewalk still. And she met up with Tommy Doyle or whatever his name is. I can't remember everyone's names. I can't have it up where I can hear it, so. I'm bad with names. There it is. She's walking up to the Myers house. And he, little Tommy Doyle, if that's his name. He warns, he just warned her not to go up there. Now, a big theory is everybody wonders why Michael chose to go after Lori. What's so big about Lori Strauss? Or Strode? Why, why is he after Lori? Well, she just went up to his house and he looked out the window and seen her. And from that point on, uh, there he is. You know, that's his mission to get Lori. She stepped up to his house. She's the victim. Now we get our first shoulder look at Michael. 
He came out and he's watching Lori walk down the sidewalk. See how they do stuff? It's not so in your face in this movie. Now you got a. Uh, now you got Samuel Lewis and trying to warn these people that Michael got out and all this stuff. And for God's sake, you can't drive a car. They were doing very well last night. So someone taught Michael how to drive a car. Fact is, it doesn't take a whole lot to know how to drive a car. Here's one of the kind of a big uh, scene uh, where there was Lori's in class, sitting by the window. And she looks out. And in the distance, you see Michael standing behind the station wagon. All you see is like about his head. And he's just looking at it through the window there. What I like about this movie, I mean, there's there's a lot to like about this movie. It's it's really a masterpiece of its time. Um, now, of course, by today's standards, it's slow and boring to a lot of people, and you know, every everyone today is so used to everything being in your face and violent and you know, vulgar and just really uh, hardcore. So a lot of a lot of younger people don't connect with this movie because it's just it's not like that. Now you got all the little jerks. Harassing Tommy. I don't like bullies. Don't like little bullies. Uh oh. What's his name? Just ran into Michael. Now Mike's looking over at Tommy. We're going to follow him along the fence. Which is a little weird. I mean, this is daylight. And you would think people would kind of see this and question it. That's kind of my only issue with some of this stuff is because it's in the daylight and I mean there's adults out. You would think they'd kind of see this guy and kind of question some stuff but there's not really a whole lot wrong with this movie. It's just a, a couple little things like that that I would that I would say. Hmm. So now he's in the car going around watching Tommy walk. I'm sorry if I'm getting the name wrong, but I think it's Tommy Doyle. Played by Paul Walker in Halloween 6. Which isn't a bad movie. It's kind of crazy with the whole thorn thing, but I don't want to get into all that. Uh, a brilliant movie guys it really is good cast of characters good story good you know good main villain and uh, just well done
And Loomis is Loomis found another one of Michael's victims along the way. He's trailing him back to Haddonfield. <clears throat> it's a uh, It's amazing how much Donald Pleasant's actually aged from this film to even the second film, but most definitely up to the fourth film. It's like he aged, you know, 30 years or something. He just looks totally different. He moves different. He's old, you know, he's gained weight and he looks like he can hardly move and it's kind of crazy. I mean, he looks he looks young and spry in this one, but he's probably in his 50s. Jamie Lee Curtis always looked really good from the neck down. Especially in this scene right here. Walking with this girl that just left the school. She's in that black black shirt with the with the whatever grayish looking sweater over it. Everybody knows Jamie Lee Curtis has got it going on in some spots. Always turns me on. Gets me kind of excited. How about you, Mikey? How excited are you? Yeah, you are. Oh, <laughs> you're sick. But I get it. I totally get it, bro. What? Yeah, I yeah, know. <laughs> Me and you both, bruh. Alright, let's continue watching. Go ahead and sit down. So now we got Mike slowly driving by. Lori and her friends. And the music's playing. That's the problem with this movie. There's so much of that music playing. It's I gotta keep it turned down. Probably when you get a copyright strike with the... Just regular... No talking in that, but I mean, with just the regular talking, but there's so much of that music throughout. <clears throat> See, we are like, if I do that, that'll happen. So we are 22 minutes in the movie, and we really haven't seen anything of Michael. We've seen the We've seen him step in front of a window where we just kind of seen the back of this area, this uh, shadow. We've seen him step out of the house and we just seen over his shoulder, just seen like this much of his body and shoulder from the back. We've seen him go up to Tommy Doyle or whatever, or not Tommy Doyle, but the one kid I can't remember his name at the school, and then he's walking along the fence and you just see like. Just from here, you know, down to about his waist, walking. You know, you don't really see a whole lot of Mike. Uh, yo, Mike. You don't see a whole lot of Michael uh, in the beginning. It, it takes a, a, probably an hour before you really start seeing... Which, to me, that... That's really, it's a testament of how good the movie is because you don't need your main antagonist right in front of your face the whole time to make him interesting. Uh, and there he is, there's a the famous shot, they're walking down the sidewalk and, they, and Lori sees him out, standing out from the bush. <laughs> like one of the most famous shots ever. Let me look at something here. Do, 
And of course, uh, the guy behind the mask, the shape, is Nick Castle. Uh, he's really a lot of people's favorite Michael Myers. You know, but uh, you know, each 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 Michael Myers moves a little different in each film, and uh, some of them better than others know how to utilize the character. And, uh, Nick Castle does a good job. Of course, he's the original, so most of the time people are going to look at the original anything and go with it. Just because it's what started it, it's what you see first, it's what you uh, judge everything else by. So, you know, it's understandable. Uh, Lori's father. His name is Peter Griffith. Really? I never knew that. Really? <laughs> never knew that. Amy. it when she says that later so right now we got Lori going in to her bedroom throwing her books down I believe she's this is where she sees Michael standing outside by the laundry yeah <laughs> that's funny I just watched that stupid little gif that little meme that little thing that everybody posts online with Michael standing there looking at her. And then Jason comes up. And then they're. I don't know. It's just a whole little skit. Just a quick little video. Probably a minute long. That's funny. Hello? 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 Hurrah. Must be a rich family for Lori to have a phone in her own bedroom in 1978. Fancy schmancy. That's what that is. Got my hair is probably a wreck. So now we got Lori leaving her house with the pumpkin, going over to babysit. A lot of the camera work and everything in this movie is pretty cool. The way it follows stuff along and, and just a lot of it looks handheld, and, you know, but it works. She's just sitting there watching kids go around trick-or-treating. And it looks like we got... Annie. 
So, Lori's in the car now with with Annie. Annie, are you okay? Are you okay, Annie? Ow! Anywho. Now we got Luma showing up to the graveyard with, I assume, a gravekeeper kind of a fella. Probably a record keeper or something like that. thing about this movie is it's kind of cool. Uh, which has kind of become kind of cliche in a lot of movies since this. But and not that this was the inventor of it. But uh, a lot of times when there's just scenes of like, you know, people out walking and talking and doing their, doing their scene. It's always neat to try to look in the backgrounds and stuff to see if you see anyone, you know, like, say, Michael Myers, to see if you might see him back there just standing somewhere, lurking, seeing what's going on. He came home. So they just seen the empty grave of, I guess, Judith Myers. Again, forgive me, I forget names and stuff. Are you okay? Yeah, I got that in my mind. This part right here is funny where Lori and Annie are in the car, you know, Annie came to pick her up. And here in like a second, I mean, they're in there smoking weed. And they run up on Annie's dad, which is a cop. Oh, here, oh my God, throwing a, rolling the windows down and throwing the weed out or whatever. and Like, he's not going to smell it. I mean, we all know that pot smells a certain way. Disgusting. <laughs> and Kim, he comes right up to the window. Like, you know he can smell that. You know, someone broke into the hardware, sto hardware store. You know, took some Halloween mask, rope, a knife, you know. Just gonna kill someone. No big deal. Just gonna kill someone. I was a cop, I'd have been hitting on Lori. Just saying. Been like, what's up? Know what I'm saying? Hit that right mic. So now Loomis walks up to the sheriff and they have their little conversation. And Mike, Michael Myers is coming by in the station wagon right behind Loomis. Don't even notice him. There you went. There you went. Did you see you go by? Yeah, you did. You went right on by. Oh, dog, you. Get off me, dude. Watch a movie. Crazy. Go back over and sit down. <laughs> so a movie that came out in 1978, for me it still holds up today. And in case you didn't know, um, 
in case you didn't know, actually, this movie was supposed to be a standalone movie. I'm jumping ahead a little bit. I could I could say this more at the end, towards the end of the movie, but uh, this movie is really supposed to be a one one off movie. That's it. But come 1981, whenever Halloween 2 come out, that was because kind of John Carpenter was kind of forced into it, legal actions or something like that. I can't remember. Uh, I usually know a lot of that, but uh, because I kind of keep up with the Halloween stuff. But um, there was something, uh, a contract or something that he ended up having to do it or something, and money talks and all that good stuff so sequel was made now the sequel itself is actually really good and they could have ended it right there with the two and uh it would have been a real and what's good about those is it's in the same night uh they take place the exact same night and nothing you know looks changed or out of place and uh so really uh at the end of the day, it, 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 it's really a good decision that they made the second one because it did expand the story a little bit. And it really, if you had to have a finish to Michael Myers, Halloween 2, 1981, had a legit finish to Michael Myers. So, so now they're there. They're at Tommy Doyle's house. Lori's in. His parents are leaving. Michael Myers is behind a tree looking... Still, we really don't get a good, solid look at him. Just kind of from behind a little bit in the dark. That's the thing about uh, Halloween movies. They need to be in the dark. That's where the whole mood and atmosphere comes along. The lighting. Sorry, I, I just ate a, a little while ago. Ah, sorry. But the, the lighting and... Uh, the shadows and the darkness and all that it, it just it really plays off the story it plays off the character it plays off the mask uh, so now the sheriff and Loomis are in the Myers house looking around and they see a I believe that's where they see the dead animal in the And I think it was a dead animal. I don't know if they're going to show it. And this one. Hmm. I thought they showed it. I don't know what cut I'm watching. I'm just watching it online. I found it free to watch. So. And you'll know that most movies have like different cuts. TV cuts and theatrical cuts and director's cuts and extended cuts. And, and a lot of them, it, it gets confusing. So... So Loomis and the sheriff are up walking around in the Myers house on the top in the second story now. Looking around. <laughs> Relax, Loomis. Sheesh. Had a window break. Looked like a gutter broke and fell down and hit the window. But I had a heart attack. Chill out, dude. Now in this movie, there's only a couple of things that I that I've ever witnessed that I've ever noticed that are kind of off. Now I'm not good at just seeing stuff sometimes because I don't really pay attention, but uh. One is with Michael Myers out in the light in the daytime just walking around, you know, and nobody uh, really stopping and saying anything or calling the police or anything, you know, especially when he's out there at the school. Um, and the other one is... Something else that I just forgot. <laughs> but I'll think of it in a minute. 
Oh, uh, we're going to get to it later in the movie, but it's always bothered me uh, whenever Michael Myers is after Lori and she's running uh, in the neighborhood and goes up on this porch, boom, 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 help, help, screaming and all that and they'll turn the light on and look and just turn the light out and it's like, you got this teenage girl that's screaming bloody murder, you know, definitely frantic. There's a problem going on, and nobody's nobody's helping. It's like, eh, eh no big deal. <laughs> I, I I never I never got those. <laughs> never understood that. Other than that, you know, I don't really find a whole lot wrong. With this movie. You relax, Annie. And he got that camel toe. That's nasty. It's just a such a simple good movie. Get your heart racing a little bit. One, one thing about it is it's it comes off as real, you know, as far as this could really happen. Uh, it's nothing far-fetched and crazy. You know, there's no supernatural craziness to it like you might get later down the road where it's just, my God, did, these, can, did they never die? Same thing with Jason and, of course, Freddy is supernatural. But, uh, you know, this is something that could really happen uh, and that shot right there with Michael such a classic shot of uh, Michael way across the road so that's the thing you keep him off in the distance keeps him a mystery there's nothing up close and in your face yet they let that build it's just a simple technique in a movie like this to uh, to let let it kind of build, you know. And then when it's time, when it happens, you get that payoff. Like, oh wow, you know, there he is, wow. And again, now we see him stepping up to Annie's door, looking in, and you just kind of see just this back part again in the dark. Nothing in your face and crazy, and she's stripping for some reason. I guess that's okay. Even though she's not pretty. From the neck down, she's okay. Way to go, Michael. Knock down the planner. Can you be a little bit more quiet, Mike? Yeah, you. A little bit more inconspicuous. Just stand there. Chill out, dude. Relax. 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 Don't do it. Dabba do do Anyway. Aw, oh, Michael killed the doggy. Guess Doggy should have listened. Doggy should have stayed away. Yeah, again, it's just one of those movies I can watch literally every week. Uh, it's just simple. I like simple 
<laughs> you know, you don't have to sit here and overthink about things and keep up with this huge in-depth story and try to unscramble things and it's simple to the point, you know. A kid goes crazy, kills his sister, goes to a mental asylum, 20 years later, gets out and stalks, you know, and goes back for even more. And uh, it's just nobody knows why. And that's what a lot of people like about Michael Myers is you don't know why. You don't know what's going on. He doesn't talk. When he's a child, he doesn't talk. Loomis talks about that, how he never talks. He just looks at the wall and looks through the wall, looks past the wall. You know, 18 years, 17, 20, whatever years it was that he was in the mental asylum. You know, you, you don't see a lot of backstory. And that's what a lot of people, my age, you know, my age, and maybe smidgen younger, but my age and all that, that's what a lot of people didn't like about the Rob Zombie movies. Just, that's one thing. His movies are garbage. But, nobody wants to see the backstory of Michael Myers. That's what makes him interesting. He's an enigma. He's he's this thing we don't know anything about. He's, he's just this force of nature and we don't know why he's doing what he does. And... There we just got a shot through a door with a sheer curtain. And you could see him just a little bit through the sheer curtain. So that was that was a cool shot. Of course this is where Annie's in the laundry room. It's the separate building, whatever, off their house or whatever, which is kind of strange. But, uh, yeah, so that's where she's at right now. Let me out. I can't get out of my mouth. <laughs> she starts freaking out. I mean, worse comes to worse. Break the window and the door. Who cares? You're not stuck in there. Relax. And here you got Tommy and the little girl. Whatever her name is. I don't forget her name. And they're watching TV. Tommy! Oh, oh, oh. oh, that's what it was. Wait, ah, oh, never mind. I'm thinking of something else. So anyway, I like her name. Is her name Lonnie? I don't forgot. Or Lindsay. Might be Lindsay. I don't know. Yeah, it's Lindsay. The little girl is playing Lindsay. She goes in there and sees Annie bent over the window, stuck in her panties. I'd have slapped that butt. Wow. Whack. Smack that butt. So we got Annie on the phone. <laughs> you know, doing that. If you notice, 
uh, whenever they turn on the TV in Annie's house, uh, the thing comes on. It's the old thing, uh, the movie. Um, and what's neat about that is, uh, shortly after this, uh, they remade The Thing and John Carpenter, you know, of course does this, so John Carpenter and John Carpenter had remade The Thing, so, which is a brilliant movie, love that movie, good movie. So now we get a really dark image of Michael again, watching Annie and, uh, Lindsay walk over to the, to the Doyle house. Tommy Doyle. Won't be long, and he's gonna bite the dust. Because old Michael has a desire to kill someone. Isn't that right, Mike? Why are you looking at me? Now you got little Tommy Doyle and Lindsay sitting there watching TV. You got Annie going back over to her place, leaving Lindsay there. You got Lori being the good old wholesome babysitter, doing the best she can. think it's almost time oh it is time for Annie to meet her doom close it's almost that time see a lot of this movie's dark that's what's good I know I've said it before but it's dark And you see only what you need to see, you know? It's not one of those overly dark movies where you can never see anything. But it's one of those that has moments of darkness. Where it needs to be and the amount that it needs to be. And it's just right. Yep, Annie. I do believe it's time for you to meet your doom. Why is my windows fogged up from the inside? Why is my windows fogged up? Uh oh. Yep. Bye bye, Annie. Annie, are you okay? Are you okay, Annie? Nope. Time to die, Annie. Come on, Mike. Taking forever. Take her out. Ugh. She has an ugly death face. Ah! That's exactly what it looked like. Now we're back over watching Lindsay and Tommy Doyle watching a movie. Watching, seeing them watch it, watching that TV. And all that. We've come a long ways. As far as technology goes. Not necessarily as, we haven't, we haven't come a long way as far as making movies or TV or music matter of fact we've stepped back about 110 years but technology is amazing watch this now 
Imagine being a little old 10 year old looking boy looking back and seeing someone do that. Now you don't know if it's for real or not. But notice how it's way off. They didn't do any zooming in. It's way off. You see Michael carrying Annie's body into the house. Very subtle. He's seen the boogeyman. And by the way, for the record, it was actually a nice day today. I still didn't go for a bike ride because it still didn't satisfy me. I'm not going out until it... The weather gives me exactly what I want. Back to the movie. Loomis is out there by the Myers house behind the bush. Little kids are going up to the house. Hey, look, it's Michael Myers' house. Look at here. And then Loomis is like, Psst, Get away from there, you stupid little kids. Get away. And they're like, Oh my God, I'm so scared. I run away. Yeah, that's what he says. You know, you caused a lot of problems, Mike. A lot of problems. No, we can't do that, Mike. We can't do that. No, Mike, no. No. Oh. oh, Mike. Stop. We can't do that. It's on camera. Let's watch a movie. All right, now the sheriff is back outside of the house with Loomis. They meet up talking. I wish I could hear some of the dialogue. I don't know all the dialogue. I just know he's like, oh my god, we've got to do what we've got to do. Michael Mars is going to kill someone tonight. I know that's what he's saying. Something like that. And the sheriff's like, how do you know this? Because I know. I've seen him. I watched this boy go from a boy to a man and a man to a boy all in one day. Anyway. How's that happen? Woo! Party! Now you got Bob pulling up there in the van with old, uh, whatever her name is. I forgot her name. Is her name Lonnie? Is that Lonnie? I think that's Bob. Yeah, that's Bob, though. I think it's Lonnie that's with him. Where's everybody's parents at? You know when you see two teenagers making out, it's not going to end well. Never ends well. And old Michael standing there watching them. Go Mike. You freak. 
dude's a freak, man. I ain't kidding. Yeah, you're a freak. You're sitting there watching people making out, bro. Hey, I'm not judging you. I would probably look too. Not gonna lie. Yeah, I would probably... I'm all good. It's all good, bro. Fist bump. It's all good. Don't you do that famous head tilt. Don't you do it. Alright, now you go back and sit down. Watch a movie. Alright, we got Lori, we got Tommy, we got Lindsay. They're sitting there watching a the movie. Now Lori's answering the phone. Hi, we're partying over here, me and Bob. We're getting it on. Mm. About to get that good stuff. Good movie. Good, good movie. And what's really good about older horror movies, another good thing, is they're not so dynamic. They're not so crystal clear. They're not so HD. You know, everything, uh, horror movies, I think, look good with that kind of grit, that old school look to them. Which is one thing I like about the Blair Witch Project. Now, of course, by today's standards, that is old, I guess. It's, you know, 20 years old. It's going to be 21 years old uh, this year. But uh, I think horror movies have gone in a direction of just everyday movies. And they're so clean and so pristine and so shiny. And uh, they don't have that that grit to them. Uh, I, I just like the old look to movies. Uh, to these types of movies. Bob is getting it on with Lonnie. I believe it's Lonnie. Lonnie, Lonnie, Lonnie. Maybe. Maybe, maybe, baby. Get it, Bob. Go, Bob. Go, Bob. Well, I see a little bit of one of these boob over there. I approve of that message. You gotta have a little bit of boob in a horror movie. The Halloween movies don't overdo it. You know, they don't push the boob in your face. You know, Friday 13th, that's a little different. You're gonna definitely get some big old boobs in your face there. But the Halloween movies aren't quite like that. It's more very subtle, more tastely done, more, you know, not over the top. They're smoking a cigarette in bed. That makes me sick. Smoking makes me disgusting anyway. Can't stand smokers. No offense, guys. Don't like smokers. My wife's a smoker. Don't like her. I love her. Bob? You're about to meet your doom, my friend. See? The kitchen scene. Completely dark totally dark you got light here you got a little light here just little little spots of light and then on his face and it makes it, it it just brings the mood in you know it just get ready there it is Yep. 
See, we get a little we get a little look at Mike here, but he's still in the dark. And of course, he actually does Michael actually does his famous head tilt here, one of them. Let me show you. That's a very iconic moment in the in Halloween is how Michael Myers kind of moves and manipulates himself and even something so simple as his head tilt is iconic. It's like that's what people look at when they look at other Halloween movies is how he moves and if he does a head tilt and how he sits up and and all these different things. Now we get to see a shot of those lovely <whistles> Lonnie Lonnie. Just an ever so slight look. You didn't really see the whole boob. You seen them pop out like right there, right at the bottom of the screen, like bloop, and then they went right under the screen where you couldn't even see them. I mean it was just nip, boom, under. You didn't they didn't put it in your face. a little bit but it's still enough to make you go yeah sorry <laughs> back when women were natural Uh-oh. Time to die. Time to die, my friend. Come on, everybody. Come on, come on everybody. Do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do. Bob and Lonnie are gone. Why is it I type in Google 1978 and it's showing me stuff from 2018? Weird. Weird, I tell you. Weird. So Dr. Loomis is still standing outside of Michael Myers' house and now he just so happens to look over and sees a station wagon from in Smith's Grove Institution, whatever. He just now sees it. He's been standing there for like an hour and he just now sees it see we are where are we at here 
we are an hour and 10 minutes in and we're still very subtle on showing Michael hour and 10 minutes in of course it's all about to go down now I think Lori's fixing the head over there to see oh This whole shot of her walking over there is just so, you know, like from her from her eyes. At, at some points, it's showing it kind of from her point of view. And it's kind of like it looks like how you would feel when you're walking in the dark over to someone's house like that across the street. You're just kind of like really kind of spooked out. with a little bit of camera movement Now, all of you know that the 2018 Halloween is a direct sequel, supposed to be a direct sequel to this 1978 Halloween. None of the other Halloween movies are in the canon. None of them matter. None of them exist. None of the story. None of those other characters. Nothing exists except for 1978's Halloween and the 2018 Halloween. In that storyline, now we're fixing to have 78, 2018, uh, then the new one's coming out this year, if it's still on track to come out in 2020, uh, it's Halloween Kills, and then next year we're supposed to get Halloween Ends. Now those, now it's going to be a four film kind of franchise uh, and, and that storyline, 78, 2018, 2020, and 2021. So, that's kind of the bad part about Halloween is there's multiple, there's really multiple storylines in there. And it can get confusing. But uh, you can Google, you can go on Google and search, you know, information on it. You can even go on on YouTube and find stuff and they'll explain it to you but uh, that's one thing that uh, the Friday the 13th movies have done they've pretty much stuck to a, a story and a, a timeline and all that and everything is pretty much connected so even though some of the Friday the 13th movies suck at least they do that right you know uh, And as much as I love Halloween, I don't love every Halloween movie. They're not all created equal. And like I said a while ago, they're not all needed. You know, in reality, they're not all needed. And that's the case with most movies. We don't need sequels for everything. But at the end of the day, money talks. So well, now you got Lori going up. She's up in the, uh, in Lori's house, in, uh, in Annie's house, I guess, and, uh, I think, you little turd, yeah, and she's walking around, she's upstairs looking around, of course it's dark, why she didn't turn, why she didn't turn the light on, I don't know, I'd be turning some lights on, all these people that walk around in these dark homes, 
in these movies? Mm -mm. I'd be like, nope. I'm 48 years old and I still get a little nervous when I get in my bed at night. Mm -mm. I get my feet up off the floor quick. So she walks in and sees Annie laying there with Judith Meyer's headstone. She's laying on the bed. Got the Judith Myers headstone. Now she's like, Oh my God, what's going on? Uh oh. Now we got. Now we got what's his name falling down from the closet swinging. Then we got Lonnie in the cupboard all cut up or something. All you see is kind of this much of her. Now we got what? What are we gonna have? Oh yeah! Look at that. One of the most beautiful, one of the most beautifully shot, iconic shots uh, of the entire movie, of just about any movie, is when he comes out of that darkness and you see his mask come into play, come into the light just barely. That's awesome. And now he's coming down the stairs. That's another iconic shot where, he, where he's standing at the top of the stairs and then he comes down. Beautifully shot, beautifully done. And her, she's sitting here, she's got him, you know, she locked the door, she's in the kitchen or whatever, and she's messing with these stupid double doors, they're all glass, she's messing with them, uh, 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 and there's a rake on the outside holding the door, that, that, that rake ain't gonna hold nothing, I'd have that door, I'd have them glass doors kicked open so quick, Michael Myers would be pissed at me, having to chase me like that. You're like, dude, I ain't even playing, dude. Now here's the moment I was talking about earlier where she's running around and she goes to the house and beating on the door and I'm, I'm screaming. She's running out of the house there screaming. And and nobody's nobody even cares. Nobody even cares. <laughs> Watch. They look right there. She's screaming. And then, bloop. I'd be like, really? Dude, I'm screaming my guts out here. I'm a kid. Help me. Oh, the keys. The keys. The keys. I wish you, if you can hear it, I'm sure you, I hope you're watching it along with me. That part where he's coming across the road, that's really, that's nerve wracking. I would whoop the heck out of that boy for taking his time. The phone's dead, Lori. The phone is dead. And it's a rotary phone. Take forever to call help anyway. Even 911 on a rotary phone sucks. Uh, Lori's getting the needle point thing. Ooh, he missed her. Boom, she stabbed him right in the neck. Stabbed him right there. And he's down for the count. One, two, three. Oh, yeah!
You relax, Mike. And now she's got his knife. Nice big old knife. Oh, oh, he's okay. He's dead. I took care of him with that little needle in the neck. And what does she do? What's Lori do? I'll tell you what she does. She throws a knife down on the floor. I'd be over there carving that body up like a turkey. Now Loomis is still looking around. Oh no, he's here somewhere. Oh no, it! I can smell him. Cop pulls up. Loomis still has to talk to him and try to convince him there's something going on. Loomis looks like he's aged 10 years just in this movie. One of the most, one, another one of the most iconic scenes is fixing to happen. Lori just ran upstairs. She told the kids to hide. Now they're coming out to see her. She's going to tell them to run. Right there, see it? Shadow coming up. Boom. Look at that. Look at that. Awesome. Awesome. Those moments, and, and they still walk in it. Those moments where you get to see him like that in those, in those few moments like that are few and far between in this movie, and, and they're so iconic. And just the way he moves and the way he, he, uh, he don't have to rush. He knows where he's going. <laughs> Of course, the iconic scene here with her in the closet and he breaks through and she stabs him with a hanger. You know, a, a lot of the movies that you like today, you, you owe it to these earlier movies like this that did it first and did it arguably best. From the Omen, the Amityville Horror, The Shining, The Thing, Halloween, uh, even even the first Friday Thirteenth, you know, uh, a lot of people like the first two uh, the first two Friday Thirteenths better than a lot of the other Friday Thirteenths, and uh, I can see why they're good. I usually watch about the first five Friday Thirteenths uh, over all the, uh, you know, over all the rest, something like that. I think about the first five. But the first Friday Thirteenth, where it ends up being Jason's mo uh, Jason's mom doing everything, you know, what a twist! That's a crazy twist. You know, you didn't really expect that. And then in Friday 13th Part 2, you get Sackhead Jason, which a lot of people like better than the hockey mask, which I can see why. It's pretty cool. It's pretty creepy. And then this part here, where Mike's fixing to sit up.
notice the lighting. It's dark. He's laying in the dark. And then. Boom. Again, it's just so, so uh, smooth and the transition and the, now they both stand up and showing him in the distance. You notice how it don't racket focus or anything like that. It keeps him out of focus a lot. And now he walks in, he's right behind her, she don't know it. And now boom. He's attacking her. They're struggling. The mask comes off. You get a quick glimpse of him. That quick. He puts the mask back on. Loomis, boom. I shot him six times. I shot him six times. Boom. Mike's standing there in the dark. Getting shot, he backs up out of the balcony and falls. Was that the boogeyman? As a matter of fact, it was. Was the boogeyman? Yes, as a matter of fact, it was. Of course, Loomis goes and looks over the balcony. Michael's gone. And that's pretty much it. And that's how they wanted to leave it. They wanted to leave it just like that. He's the boogeyman, he's there, and he's gone. <coughs> but the powers that be, lawsuits, money, all that stuff, and now, and then we had to have Halloween 2. So, which like I said earlier, is a good sequel. It, it, and then it was supposed to be the final Halloween. And that's why they started going with the anthology theme of uh, Halloween 3. They were trying something different. Nobody liked it. And so they started back with Halloween 4, 5, 6, etc, etc. Good stuff. And roll credits. Well guys, this has been a long video. It's probably going to take my computer 7 years to process all this. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you followed along with your movie. I hope you leave comments. Uh, I really enjoyed it. It was nice to watch it, even though I wanted to hear it. I don't want to get struck down by YouTube copyright turds out there. So uh, anyway, guys, stay safe out there. Don't forget, get up, get out, get rad, do it to it. Even when watching a movie silently with my old pal, Michael Myers. Ain't that right, buddy? That is right. You're a good guy. I like you. Ah! Ah! Ah!